Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about case history and case study method in clinical psychology. Please turn on your captions if you have any trouble following along and let's get started. So we have all heard the phrase case study. It involves deeply diving into investigation about a particular person or situation. This method was highly popularized by Sigmund Freud and Joseph Breuer and their work on their patient Anna O, which is of course a pseudonym. Case studies are not experiments, but they are helpful in constructing hypotheses and help us understand new and strange phenomena whenever we come across them. In fact, case studies have helped majorly in the development of hypnosis as well as psychoanalysis. Now, of course, we need some kind of scientific method to perform case studies in today's world. Single subject research designs are scientific research models made for a specific subject. Yes, an entire method applicable only to a certain person. I bet even your girlfriend has not made you feel so special. These single subject methods make use of time series methodologies where assessments of a certain parameter is done across time in a single individual. Individual baselines themselves act as the control group here and hence the question as to whether intervention is even working or not is reached by analyzing parameters over a certain period of time. The ABAB design alternates between control and intervention where the stage A stands for control and the B stage stands for intervention. Basically, if you want to find out whether your girlfriend will hug you more if you keep bringing her flowers, analyze her baseline level of hugging you in the first A stage, then bring flowers for her consistently in the B stage, and stop bringing flowers in the A stage again, and then again bring flowers for her in the B stage. Just because this method is known as ABAB does not mean each stage is analyzed only twice, alright? It can be repeated over multiple number of times, and the tabulation of data regarding the number of hugs she gives you when you bring her flowers and when you don't will be recorded. Now, of course, there are critiques of this. The first one is that there is usually more than one behavior which we wish to analyze. You don't only want to increase the number of time your girlfriend hugs you, but also decrease how much tantrum she throws around when you are late to the date. On top of that, some situations are much more delicate than your relationship, whereby it would be unethical to stop the treatment stage once it has begun. For example, one of your friends gets panic attacks. Would you, for the smallest period of time, be willing to stop that intervention and treatment which enables him to function properly? Now, to counter the first problem of there being too many behaviors you wish to change, we have multiple baseline designs. We study the baselines of different behaviors which we wish to change and then, keeping all factors constant, work on a single behavior at a time. Assessment of baselines of other behaviors continues even while one of them is being treated. So, once you are done with bringing her flowers every now and then to increase the number of times she gives you a hug, maybe now you are ready to compliment her extra nicely every time she does not scream at you. And hey, chances are that these behaviors are correlated. So if you manage to increase the number of times your girlfriend hugs you by bringing flowers, maybe that will also decrease her chances of screaming at you. And you know, you can also try not being late. Just saying. Also, to counter the problem of ethics, no reinforcements are withdrawn from multiple baseline designs. That means that treatment will simply not be removed for your friend who is having fatal panic attacks. Man, we spent a lot of time on that slide. Don't worry, we are nearing towards the end. So, one major method by which we can gain data in case studies is observation of a person's daily routine. Besides that, we take unstructured interviews and also snoop through diaries and personal items, after due permission of course. Most of the data which is collected is qualitative and not numerical in nature. We can interpret such data using different techniques such as thematic coding or grounded theory. We maintain an ideographic approach while carrying out case studies, which means that we are not going to compare this data with any other data and hence there is no point of a control group here. There are also ethical issues which keep popping up with case studies such as clinicians asking your client deep questions which are personal but may not be related to the problem at all. That's because people can be very messed up. The strengths of case study method are that it gives you good quality qualitative data. <laughs> Get it? Good quality qualitative data. Okay, sorry. Then it also gives us an insight into the subjective mind of the person. The limitations are pretty apparent here. I mean, you cannot generalize your findings at all since the study is so hard to replicate and there is always an issue of an observer noting down simply those behaviors which support his preconceived notion of what is wrong with you, something we know as the observer bias. Not to mention how time-consuming case studies can be. That's all for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and see you next Monday. Take care.